I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 1986, so I've been pretty intimately involved with diabetes for about 29 years. It wasn't until 2005, though, that I started to get involved with advocacy, and that's when I started writing my blog, Six Until Me, in May of 2005, to engage with others and find people who were kind of walking the same walk that I was. Over the last 10 plus years, I've learned a lot about the ways that I like to engage on the internet and the lessons that I've learned uh, and the missteps along the way. So despite the fact that I hate those top 10 things about things sorts of posts, these are the 10 things I've learned since engaging in social media and diabetes. The first is, once published, forever public. And that was something that I am glad I took note of right off the bat. I knew that once I put something on the internet, it was there forever. Even if you want to scrub that stuff away, it doesn't go away. So you need to have a good comfort level of what you're willing to share. To that same end, the second thing that I've learned is that I needed to know how thick my armor was. When you put things out there on the internet, it's there for people to celebrate with you or to critique for you. Um, which can open you up to some conversations that may make you uncomfortable. So you have to remember and always keep in mind that anything you put out there will be commented upon and not all of those comments will be supportive or even useful. So you need to be able to discern between constructive criticism and internet trolls. Know how thick your armor is and know how thick it needs to be in order to share at the level that you want to share at. The third thing is, it doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to have this big fancy website with custom this and paid for that. You can just use the most basic of templates or most basic of mediums already available to get your story out there. It just has to be your story told with honesty and integrity. And that kind of goes along with, you don't have to do it all. You don't have to be on Pinterest and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Tumblr and other things that I don't even know exist. You don't have to do everything. Pick what you like to be involved in and have that be the medium by which you share your story. You don't have to have a foothold in every single social media category. Just find the one where you feel comfortable and use that one. Someone once told me that by sharing our stories on the internet, we're giving people a window into our lives, but they also said we don't have to give them a door. So just because you're allowing people to hear what you have to say about diabetes or sharing your story about your personal health journey, it doesn't mean that you have to open the door for them. Let them come sit on your, your couch and throw your furniture around or whatever. You don't have to let them make a, a mess of your house. You can keep certain things private. You don't have to let everyone in about everything. You can say no. Know your boundaries and stick to them kind of feeds into the whole next one, which is honesty. Honesty is crucial. It's important. Being honest and real about life with diabetes makes your story more accessible. It's easier to engage with a storyteller or a person who is, I don't know, sharing the highs and the lows because you know they have both. Everyone is doing this differently, but nobody is doing it perfectly. Another thing I've learned is that privilege must be acknowledged. And so as I have this as a medium to communicate with my peers to get that psychosocial balance, I have to recognize that there are people who are more concerned about getting access to insulin or test strips or devices that they need to control their health and not so much the kumbaya stuff that I tend to gravitate towards. So it's important for me to keep privilege in perspective and reach out and help where I can. It is our job collectively as a community to take care of one another. This is a big one. Community can make you whole. It was one of those things that I didn't know I was missing until I found it. And then I said, oh my God, this is what I've been looking for this whole time. Not someone to give me medical advice, but someone to be on this journey with me. Which brings me to the last thing, which is don't be afraid to ask. If you want to make a difference in your life, in this community, in the greater diabetes community, this is where you can do that. Ask for help. Ask people to support your mission or donate to your campaign or raise awareness for what you are trying to raise awareness of. Lean on your community for help. That is what we're here for. That is why we're here. Those are some of the things that I've learned in the last decade, but I, I know I haven't learned everything. There's so much more. This learning curve, just like the one for diabetes, is very steep, but I'm glad I'm not doing it alone, and I'm glad you guys are there. So here's where I come in feeling kind of stupid because did you notice there were only nine things? Only nine things. So those were the nine things that I've learned about diabetes and social media. Nine. Maybe I'll learn one more soon.